Hey everyone, it's Joe Scar. Today we're going to take a look at how we did some 3D noise text map sampling and used implicit shape in order to create this interesting mesh. Now, I will be honest, so we actually just took a snapshot of TP, threw a relax on there in order to get those nice uh, curved things in there. The actual raw mesh looks something like this, which I know looks a little bit different. And then, of course, we just take that and uh, make an array and rotate using uh, standard max tools. So nice and fast and works really well. So let's take a look at the logic real quick. Uh, start it off with a memory just to store some values that we're going to need later. This iterate XYZ cube, we're going to show you how we rebuild this a little bit better faster. Uh, this one has a little bit of a drawback, but basically it does the same thing. It runs through 3D space, samples a texture map, uh, looks at the value of that color, and uh, uses only a certain threshold in order to create a particle. And we kind of stir up their position a little bit, and we use a density map. Uh, a bunch of this stuff is just kind of left over. Viewport color in order to visualize the particles at birth, do a p-search, figure out what's my my density of the surrounding particles, and based on that density value, uh, we color color them. But we use that density in order to uh, punch out certain holes in this next rule, where they uh, look at their density, and if it's within a, within a certain range, in this case, if it's over 120, um, then they are going to die to create those nice big gaps. So let's go ahead and see if we can't recreate that, just so you can see the process. Um, we'll start off changing max a little bit here, create a TP. Can't promise this is going to turn out exactly the same, but we'll try. Let's make a standard kind of system top level, because uh, when we, if and when we save this into a black box, we remember we want to organize this so that it is easy easy and self-contained and you get kind of a one-to-one -one naming system going so uh, I think we called them volume so we'll just call them volume and there's only going to be one group for now let's get this over here all right so what do we want to do we're going to have multiple rules we know we'll just call this birth XYZ um, you can choose to design this you know, however you want. Really, you just need to do something that samples in 3D space. You, it could be as simple as uh, filling a node full of particles uh, using the volume posts and then just and testing that way. Um, I kind of like a little bit more control so that you can uh, yeah, have full control. So this will, we're going to call this dimensions. Dimensions is going to be our XYZ, and when we make this, what we really want is to have this uh, box shape that we're going to make to be centered around the position. So we're going to need to know, you know, what's our total dimension, our total length, and we're going to take half of that to go one way, and the other half to go the other way, so that it's offset from a center mark. Okay, so we know we're going to need a float. I'm going to call this half multiply by you guessed it, and um, yeah, let's leave that for now. We're also going to need some negative one values in order to multiply these in a negative fashion. So let's do a negative one. And one of the things we definitely need is we only want this to happen at um, this first frame of the sim, at least for this particular case. So we're going to use a boolean connected to an egg timer, which is the easy way to do this. Easy is nice. Have it only fire once, so we set that to single. For zero frames, you don't need a number of frames, it'll still process. And what'll happen is we're just going to use the reached value coming out of there. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this half value and multiply it against each of these um, X, Y, and Z axes values. So I'm actually going to choose to do a multiply here. I'll just call this that. Take one there, one here, uh, one here, and of course there. There's other ways to do this. You have to make some choices. I'm going to take this. We're going to get half that value on each axis. And before we get too much further, let's go ahead and create our iterators. So our iterators are going to, remember, an iterator lets you do multiple 
things in one sample or even in per particle. Um, so basically like per call it's going to let you do run something multiple times. And in this case we're going to have this be at the beginning of the sim uh, start this whole iteration process. Now we're going to go ahead and let's get the count out here. And I'm going to set this up a little bit different than the uh, first example I showed you just so we can do it a little bit better. We're going to use a world raster. So let's just go ahead and and remember to uh, duplicate operators in TP, you hold down shift and left click and drag. To remove operators, hold alt and right click. Yeah. Alright, so might as well get that division going there. So let's have our X each of these axes divided by the world raster. For now, let's put the world raster at one. And so that value is going to control our x-axis. We'll just call this iterator x. We're going to need one for, you guessed it, and for the other one. Okay, now here is something very important you need to know. is We are going to be sampling on the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis. We're going to sample three times, all in one little time step. The on has to control what is happening. So in this case, the x-axis, as it goes through whatever number of count it has, for each one, it's going to fire off a true to the y. The y, uh, yeah, and we'll see how this process stacks up. Yeah, each one is going to do its count uh, through there. Okay, so let's, let's let make a little bit more room. Let's get our oops. Let's get these here. My num, my z, and this, all of them divided by that. Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to start accumulating the position that's generated. Um, this is our end goal here. We're going to want this x, y, z to become coordinates in space, which we're going to feed into a text map. Oops, not text map. And remember, text map is a new, new one in TP 6.6, uh, .6, where you can actually do some very nice uh, map handling adjustments, um, or just generate a, a simple little kind of noise texture field. Um, in this case, we actually want the text map color. So let's dump that guy in. Okay, so let's go ahead and get through here. What we're going to do is we need to control our berthing on the left side and the right side of this uh, each axis. In order to make that really easy, we are just going to use the lovely value to value. Now, iterators output you know some different data. One of them we could track how many numbers, like if this was 10 coming in, I think it would be 0, 1, 2, 3, up to 9. But we can just use normalize, because whatever the number is, it's just going to come out 0 to 1. We can use that 0 to 1 into a value to value in order to say, all right, if I come in at 0, I can be whatever number we plug into this output minimum. And then as that value, uh, which of course from 0 to 1, it's going to go from 0 to 1, is going to ramp up to whatever our max value is on the right side. Of course, you can move these up and down and move them all around and reshape this curve to kind of control your sampling, which is pretty fun, too. So, but the the out min and the out max are going to actually be going to be controlled by these dimensions, the half size and the negative size. So the out min is going to be the negative half value of the x dimension. The max is going to be, of course, the half uh, value of that dimension. So that's how we're going to connect these. And then, of course, we're going to set all this fun up for these other ones. We've got out min, out max. And of course, we have three three separate things like this, because that way we can have independent axis control. Let's actually go ahead and plug. You know, I mean, you could just make it to always make a cube, but you know, that's kind of boring. We're going to want something a little more fun than that. So let's say 20 by 30 by uh, 10. Okay, so let's finish hooking these up. We're going to have 
our negative z value as the min, positive half z value as the max. Um, these values coming in through here are going to be uh, coming into the number normalize. Okay, now we're going to want to collect that data. So the x-axis we're going to collect here, y here, z here. Easy peasy. Okay, so now uh, we need to add our map. Let's go ahead and just grab a cellular. Not checker, that would be a little boring. Okay, make that size. Yeah, it's fine. Um, so you can see here it ends up being mostly kind of white, a little bit of black, uh, negative space. That's all fine. Let's drag, drop this in. Remember, make it an instance. If you make it a copy and you go back and you adjust it here in the material editor, it will not have an effect because it's a separate copy. You want them to be instances. There have been actually been projects. Oh, anyway, long story. I'm not about boring you with long stories. Let's get to the meat of this. <laughs> okay, so it's an instance. And let's then, we're going to take whatever that those coordinates are now, and we're not going to feed them into the UVW. You can do that and see what happens, but you'll be happier if you put it into the surface position, which, that, which should also can mean uh, world position. So we're also going to need to take whatever color it finds. We're going to analyze the uh, value portion of that. And now here's something critical, right? So we're doing an iterator. Um, these iterators are, we have to control exactly when these things happen. So we're controlling these on. So this iterator controls this one, controls this one. The, all of that has to be combined. And when we test this color, it has to be an AND here to connect these two. Uh, otherwise, it will not work. So let's go ahead and make our position born. We're going to do a pistol shot per call. So every time I get a an on coming in, I'm going to create a particle at that position. Lifespan, sure. No speed, please. Variation, 180 degrees, because we're also going to play with the emission distance here in a second. OK, oops, and I forgot to put them into volume. So this is about right. Let's see what we get. Um, big thing, if you do this at home, set your f simulation start to be one frame after the first frame, so you get a little bit of a kind of a safety zone. OK, what do we get? We get nothing. That's great. So let's see what happened. OK, that on. Yeah. Is the bool on? Ha! Well, the bool's not on, so that would make it a little hard for this to ever fire true. And still nothing. Very impressive. OK, let's check these. OK, so what happened? Well, this is where we're going to start to use debug. Debug log window. Excellent tool. Learn how to use it, because that's the best way to find out what is going on in your system. So let's just go ahead and do this. Uh, make sure that's on there. Let's check this. Just pick a couple values. All right, so we get a whole bunch of this going on. It's great. Maybe our threshold's not cool. It's not cool. Because what it's saying is, whatever this uh, color value is coming in, it has to be over 1 or under 0. Let's make that inside and 2.5. Turn off debug. Maybe we'll get lucky. Hey, look at that. All right. So we get some interesting stuff there. That's cool. Um, let's make this a little more fun and turn edit on the fly off. Go here. My poor material editor keypad is broken. And let's look at our map. And our map, if we now start changing this, we'll get some cool stuff in there. OK, so let's go ahead and jump to the fun. We're going to make a rule called shape, and I like to back up for this so it's not processing right away. This is under uh, implicit shape, and let's take a look at 
some values. Let's use a surface. Um, yeah, we'll just turn this on and see what happens. Let's make sure Master Dynamic is showing the mesh. Hey, we got some mesh, all right. Um, so it's probably our scale is a little off. Let's go ahead and increase this. And voila. All right. Um, you can see we've got a little isolated guy here. We can make a rule to kill that off if you need. Um, okay, so interesting little 3D map shape. That's cool. Uh, what happens if we just out of curiosity switch to chips? All right, get kind of a different look. How about fractal? Eh, kind of blobby. Um, well, maybe we turn off fractal. We get that a little more. Okay. So now let's go ahead and change our dimensions. And our dimensions, let's um, let's make it a little bit taller. So let's go 30. Great, we got that. Okay, so our mesh resolution is fairly rough. Um, we don't have a whole lot of particles right now, just 3,500. So it's it's nice and fast. We can use some of the nice. Um, set mesh smoothing all the way to one. Use these iterations here to uh, kind of smooth out that that mesh. So that's one step. Now what we can do is we can uh, I should have organized well. There's just TP there. Let's make a layer for that. Let's also make another layer called results. Let's select TP. Results is the currently highlighted layer. Let's go tools snapshot bang hide TP okay so we still have this now it's just plain old max object and we can throw whatever fun modifiers you want on it um, for now let's throw a relax and crank it way up and so you can get some nice curvature on there and make it look really smooth um, you could throw a you know uh, optimize or whatever as well so there's that now, just by tweaking the map settings, um, changing the dimensions, throwing combinations of maps in here, and then playing with the modifiers after you do a snapshot, you can get some really cool results. So, so this is basically how you sample a 3D noise texture. Um, just run through it one more time. We've got the, uh, the bool into an egg timer in order to act as a one-time switch. So only fire at the beginning of the sim in this particular case set up a world raster so we can control the granularity of the number of samples we use the dimensions to define the overall bounding box and we use the half uh, multiplied by each axis by negative one in order to get the uh, make it centered so it's got a negative component a positive component and centered around this axis here and then we uh, for each of the iterators remember we're controlling each one of them on and using that rasterized uh, dimension for the count and then using the number normalize so whatever that count is is going to come out as 0 to 1 which we can then easily interpret uh, between 0 to 1 and control our out minimum and out maximum being the negative axis for half of the negative axis value and half or half of the positive uh, axis value in order to control the where in this particular axis it is uh, and then just doing that multiple times one for each axis combine all those to create a position take that into the surface position portion of the texture map color and throw in whatever map you want there or combination of maps you can be very creative get the whatever that color is coming out so we can test individual components of color like the, in this case the value uh, in which case we're just going to say anything from 0 to 0.5 um, and of course all of this you can customize to your heart's content <laughs> If all those conditions are true, meaning if we are inside a multi-layered iteration and that particular position that was generated meets that color value threshold uh, requirement, then go ahead and, and create a particle there. nice thing about this method is that it um, tests the position before it creates the particle versus creating all the particles and then filtering them afterward, which, you know, is not bad. It's just this is a little more closer to the immediate result and saves you an extra step. Of course, you can add another step like I did in the other file where we do actually look at the densities of those uh, and kill off certain parts. Or, you know, you can kill off certain parts at random or whatever other criteria that you like. Now, 
Okay, and then of course we feed that into an implicit shape, and you're done. Take a snapshot, uh, play with it at max. Of course, um, if you're going to make this animated and you need um, that kind of access, you'd probably end up using groups object, uh, groups as objects, and that way it would create a volume object on some layer that you could uh, apply modifiers to so that this could update over an animation. All right, that's it. I'm going to go ahead and save this file out for you guys. Hope you're doing well. Have a great 2018, and uh, keep an eye out for more awesome features coming out in TP. Cheers.